Hey everyone, we just took a quick little break here for lunch, but we're back in Austin at the Linux Foundation's Open Security Summit. And I'm really happy to be joined by our next guest. His name is Andrew Aiken. Andrew works uh, for Wipro, Wipro, mm -hmm. W-I-P-R-O. And, and he is sort of, uh, well, he, he is the Wipro rep to the Linux Foundation in, all, in various aspects and sub-foundations of the LF, as well as open source in general. Mm -hmm. But we're going to dive into that in a little bit here. Andrew, welcome to TechStrong TV. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Happy to be here. I'm glad to have you. So, Andrew... I, I mean, I did my best, <laughs> right? But you can do better. Mm -hmm. Explain to the audience, you know, what, what you do is, as part of, of Wipro. And I think most sure. of our audience knows who Wipro is, but it probably wouldn't hurt to give them a little background on that too. Sure. For those of you who may not be familiar with Wipro, we are one of the large global systems integrators, somewhere around 240,000 employees uh, across the planet today. Um, <clears throat> we are a, a fairly traditional systems integrator. We provide resources, solutions, uh, technology, innovation to our, to our clients, ac again, across the globe and across all industry sectors. Uh, my role, I am the head of open source for Wipro. Uh, I am in the office of uh, CTO, my team and I. And really, we are the, the face of open source for, uh, for Wipro and for the, uh, th this community, the analyst community, clients, and, and so on. Uh, and I'm here representing Wipro f for, uh, at, at, this, at the Open Source Summit and as the board observer for OpenSSF. Excellent. So let, let's talk about Wipro a little bit. Mm -hmm. Look, you don't get 240,000 odd people without being deeply embedded into, you know, <laughs> a good chunk of the global 2000, global 2000 and beyond. Yep. And... You know, with that kind of coverage, with that kind of footprint, when we talk about being the head of open source or what Wipro's, mm -hmm. you know, open source strategies and, and tools and everything are, there's a big, there's a big chunk of business, right? When when you think about how much software and, and so forth mm -hmm. is, is based or either is open source or contains open source today, you know, this is this is mm -hmm. uh, important. It, it's very important. Right. Uh, depending upon which of the analysts or reports that, that you subscribe to, uh, over 90% of production software in the world today is either completely based on open source or has a portion of open source on it. Yep. So it's, it's very critical software. Absolutely. So, you know, this isn't some dusty corner in the office of the CTO where, where people no. are, are mulling through <clears throat> open source licenses or something like no. that. No. This, is, this is really dynamic kind of stuff. Um, secondly, you mentioned you were an observer on the OSSF board, but I thought you were on another board or two as well. I am. I'm on a few. The other one, uh, the main one that I am the board member of is FinOS, the FinTech Open Source uh, yes. Foundation, one of the very first vertically oriented industry foundations out there. Most foundations or projects or communities are horizontal based on an, a, a, a technology. This is more vertically or industry oriented. So th that's not the FinOps people who nope. are about cloud cause and fi stuff. right no this is finas with an s oh, fintech right. open Tell source me. yeah so it was founded i think about 6 years ago now by eight of the world's largest banks and now they they have dozens and dozens of members and organizations like wipro and and non bank w uh, vendors and it really was set up to provide an environment where financial services organizations can open source their own software in kind of a safe and compliant uh, environment with a group of peers who understand what it means to to develop software in such a highly regulated environment. Got it. Excellent. Um, and I I forgive me if I didn't catch it. Was That's there right. a meeting of them here? Uh, no, week? they have their own uh, event. They have the Open Source uh, Strategy Summit in London in three weeks. I think that's kind of oh, their version of this event. Uh, cool. They are also under the Linux Foundation umbrella. They're a sub foundation, mm -hmm. uh, as is OpenSSF and the other foundation. Well, that, yeah, that's uh, the uh, it's the umbrella. Right. It's the 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 legal kind of mm -hmm. 
format that I think yeah. LF favors. You know, yeah. I always try it. I always call them for some reason daughter foundations, and I don't know if that's <laughs> well, today's we, world if that's still we apropos. Just call them or sub not. foundations. Sub yeah. foundations sound good. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I thought I knew about a lot of the foundations, but mm -hmm. I, I wasn't. I'm not as familiar with. It's it's one to take a look at. They're becoming a real industry driver. More and more global banks are joining them along with a number of the large uh, tech vendors. So they're really, and they're getting involved with some other interesting standards bodies. So they're beginning to promote open source as a standard within financial services. Excellent. Excellent. Well, what's the website for people who maybe want to uh, find out? Just finos.org. Finos.org. Okay, check it out. Yep. All right, let's go to Open SSF. They yes. had a big day here yesterday. Yep. Uh, we've interviewed a number of people from the uh, Open mm -hmm. SSF over the last two days. What what's been you are a board observer there on behalf of WePro. Right. What what's your take? Our our CTO Suba Tatavarte is our board representative, but uh, on the day to day basis, I'm the board observer and drive a lot of the programs. Um, so and today's obviously continuing more and more. OpenSSF related activities. I just spoke on a, a panel about an hour ago. Um, my takeaway is I'm, I'm glad to see more and more people are taking, uh, paying attention to, the, to this effort. Uh, recently, I and my peers were in Washington, D.C. for a number of meetings with uh, agencies, different agencies who are, again, also really beginning to pay attention to this issue, uh, obviously driven by uh, Biden's executive orders of a year, over a year ago. Um, but my takeaway is it's interesting to see the overall industry momentum and the collaboration between public and private sector on some of these software supply chain security initiatives. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. So let me play devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. So I, I've, been in, I've been in security for 25 years. I've been mm -hmm. in technology for 30 plus years. You know, and, and in security, we always had open source tools that we used to secure all <coughs> software. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The OpenSSF's charter is to secure open source software, which is great, right? When 90% of software contains open source. Yep, it's important. <coughs> it's an important thing. What I'm worried about with the whole supply chain, SBOMs, and all of these things mm -hmm. is <clears throat> Will we focus so much on open source that maybe something else sneaks through that's not open source? That, that's likely to happen, right? Sneaks through? I don't know. Well, well I by use definition, the word sneak. it's well, by definition it kind of sneaks through, right? Right. It doesn't matter whether it's open source or proprietary. Um, but will it do that because there's uh, too much attention on open source? I I don't know that that's the case. I don't know that that can be the case. Uh, the fact is there's not enough attention uh, today. We've heard there's a whole bunch of initiatives, for example, around SBOM everywhere, SBOM anywhere, right? We did our own survey of our customers and got about 65 responses, I think. And of those, you know, a dozen were actually asking for SBOMs. Far fewer were getting SBOMs. And then even the SBOMs they, they received, they couldn't really do much with them. So the fact that we're, there's a lot of talk around SBOMs and Biden's executive orders doesn't mean that there's actually a lot going on at the end user consumer point. Mm -hmm. right? it's, it's, we have a long, long, long way to go. Yeah. Yep. I, 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 don't, I don't doubt it, right? And especially when you're looking at 90% of the software has open source. Look, if you could cover 90%, that's pretty damn good. Yes. Um, I, I, I think... Also, part of it is we we spent so long kind of fight, and when I say we, I mean at the enterprise level, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? For so long, a lot of enterprises sort of fought open source software. It was like, oh no, who are you going to call for support? How are you going to get training? I get it. And and then there was this, there was this also this, especially as I was coming up, right? Mm -hmm. There was this like two-faced argument, which is, well, open source software is secure by more secure by design because there's yeah, more eyeballs more on it. Yep. And you know, how could something be insecure when everyone's 
Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, who the heck looks at the source code? You know, very few people are actually, unfortunately, we're testing these open source tools, components, whatever. That mm -hmm. you just oh, you use Andrew used it. Good right. enough for me. I'll use it too. And and so we, you know, it really became. You know, it, it was a fallacy about the open eyes, or the or how many sets of eyes the, were on it. Not necessarily a fallacy. It's it was actually the impact was maybe not what uh, that truism says, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because people and I've been in open source for 22 years. I was probably one of the very first people to be wearing a suit in open source, mm -hmm. okay. uh, and I fought many, many, many of those early early battles. And I think the issue is that developers, open source developers, people who are creating all this new innovative technology, right? They don't, they don't grow up thinking about uh, secure by design, right? Or secure from the ground up. They just wanted to get good code out there or code and make it good over time and make it innovative and make it useful to themselves and to others, right? They weren't worrying about the security issues. And, Today, that's one of the, the challenges uh, for the OpenSSF and its members, is working with the projects and helping them understand why it's important to implement secure coding best practices and providing them the resources to do so because OpenSSF represents Big, big Brother, right? If you mm -hmm. look at who the members are, that's just the reality or the perception that m many open source projects have is, okay, we should be improving our, our, the way we develop software, but we don't want you to tell us how. Right. And so you have to find this balance as the open SSF has to find this balance in working with the projects and communities and saying we're, we're, we're here to help and we truly are and we're not going to try and change the way you develop software totally. We're going to try and help you improve it. Good. Agreed. Um, now, the other thing that I, I spent a lot of the, today talking to a bunch of folks from open SSF, but I've spoken mm -hmm. to a bunch of other people as well on various uh, sub-foundations or mm -hmm. subgroups within Linux Foundation. It, 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 it's amazing, and maybe it's just because when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail, <laughs> but it's amazing to me how much oxygen OpenSSF is attracting right now. Absolutely. I mean, and I mean, I think it speaks to just how important it is. It does. Um, but the security guy in me says, yeah, I've heard this story before. <laughs> top three priority, top three yeah. priority. Yeah. And here we are still with issues that we haven't addressed. So OpenSSF is still primarily vendor driven. There are some end user consumer organizations like JP Morgan and City and a few mm -hmm. others, right? That's going to change, you know, over time I expect more end users to join. Uh, but it's a vendor-driven organization who understands the issue because we're the ones that, that actually use the open source to build our products and then bring those products to market, sell them to our consumers, I mean, our, our customers, right? So we know f at, at kind of a core level that this is a huge issue. That doesn't necessarily mean that the end user consumer, one, even if they recognize it as an issue, has the ability to actually do anything about it. Uh, one of the uh, things I shared during my talk is how many titles that I've seen and our customers, just the title has gone from DevOps to DevSecOps. And when you ask those people, so what does that mean now that you have those additional three letters in your title? And they're like, not really much of anything. Right? So, well, so you're preaching to the there, choir. There's lip service. We are DevOps.com. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but we're also Security Boulevard, and I've been bringing the DevSecOps event to RSA for seven years. Yep. And I've said this publicly before. To me, there was always SEC in DevOps. It was always mm -hmm. part of it. But by putting those three letters in there, we clearly sent a message to the security community that, hey, you're <coughs> part of this too. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily that shift left and, and right, security right. is everyone's responsibility wasn't already something we should be doing, but it, it, it gave the security folks who for a long time were a wandering tribe in the <laughs> desert, right? Yeah. They weren't really part of IT. They were kind of right. in risk in some places and other places they were IT. They, they were clearly other, mm -hmm. right? Not them, other. And, and so it made them them, right? right? And right. that was a good thing. 
<coughs> excuse me, I do want to point out that adding those three letters hasn't necessarily translated no. to additional training, additional headcount, additional budget. It is, you are now DevSecOps, figure it out without any additional resources. So I'll tell you what, and, and I spend a good chunk of my time talking to vendors mm -hmm. who offer DevSecOps solutions and to end users who, who employ them. Here's the funny thing. No, it hasn't necessarily added to budget. Mm -hmm. And in fact, most DevSecOps solutions still come out of the security budget, not out of the developer budget or DevOps, mm -hmm. if you want to call it that budget. And that, that's the fact, that, right? That's, so that, I, I understand, is true. But what we are seeing is that more traditional DevOps tools are now beginning to include security components to it. So that's a very positive development, mm -hmm. I think. It's gonna, it, it is now bringing additional capabilities to the tools that many DevOps people have been using for years. And, and a lot of that, I'll tell you, is through partnerships, like the Sneak, for instance, does a great job with yeah, absolutely. partners. There's another company, Shift Left. There's a bunch of yeah. the DevSecOps vendors who recognize that, look, in order to make tools for developers, you gotta kinda embed this stuff in the tools they're using. Yep or the it's, platforms they're on, or whatever you want to call it. And because um, everyone today is a platform. <laughs> but um, it, it's interesting, and it bodes well, right? Yeah, that, that's my point. Make a I think it bodes well. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, we're, we're over time, but Andrew, okay. I want to talk about WePro a yes. little bit. WePro. I mean, obviously, CTO on the board of OpenSSF. Mm -hmm. You are kind of the liaison mm -hmm. to Linux Foundation open source. Beyond the obvious, why why is this so important to WebPro? It 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 boils down to trust, right? We we talk about being a trusted partner to our our clients. How can you how can you do that if you're not paying attention to their security, whether your customers are or not, right? So that's one of that is at the end of the day the core reason that we're investing in this. Now there are all sorts of other benefits, but it's making sure that our trust our, our customers have real trust in us. Understand that we, from a software security best, uh, perspective, we have their best interests. And there's all sorts, again, there's benefits in upskilling our resources by participating here and, and through contributing through the training programs. It helps with our branding and our differentiation, our ability to recruit good, good developers. There are all other, all these are other. A lot of benefits. These there. are core benefits, but at the end of the day is trust. Excellent, man. I want to thank you for coming on today, and I want to thank you for all the work you're doing in the community. Well, thank you, and I appreciate, appreciate the time. All righty. Andrew Aiken from WePro here, uh, board observer at OpenSSF, board member of FinOS, mm -hmm. another Linux foundation. And, uh, what did you say, about three weeks, there's a big Finox uh, conference the in fin Linux. FinOS, yeah, in, 